from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Monday, December the 5th, 2016. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu announced a new version of a bill that has been in contention for several weeks now to legalize outposts in the West Bank. The proposed regulation bill relates to such outposts built on privately owned Palestinian land, like the outpost of Amona, which Israel's high court ruled needs to be dismantled and its residents relocated. The compromise reached in Netanyahu's coalition on the new version of the bill does not allow for Amona to remain and would entail the residents to relocate, but would allow them to stay in the same general area. The Knesset will vote on the controversial bill later tonight. And the Prime Minister reiterated his position that Jewish settlements are not the cause of Israel's conflict with the Palestinians. He made the remarks in his video address to the annual Brookings Institution's Saban Forum for Middle East Policy yesterday. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry also spoke to the forum, where he stated that settlements were perhaps not the cause, but that they were an obstacle to peace. Ynet reports that the mother of one of the Israeli boys kidnapped and murdered two years ago will appear before a federal judge here in the U.S. tomorrow. Rachel Frankel's son, Naftali, along with Eyal Yifrach and Gilad Shur, was kidnapped and murdered two and a half years ago in the West Bank by Hamas terrorists. Frankel was a dual American citizen, and his mother will appear in court as part of a lawsuit filed through the U.S. justice system, alleging that Iran and Syria supplied money to the terrorists who carried out the deadly attack. The suit is seeking damages in the amount of $340 million. Frankel is being represented by the Israeli law center Shurat Hadin, which is led by attorney Nitsana Darshan Leitner. She told Ynet that Iran and Syria are hotbeds for funding terrorism, and that she and her team will continue to fight them in any way possible. A ceremony was held today in Turkey to officially welcome Israel's new ambassador to the country, Eitan Na'e, who presented his credentials to Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan today at the Turkish Presidential Palace. Na'e was greeted by an honor guard of Turkish soldiers, and the Israeli national anthem of Hatikva was played in his honor. As we have been reporting to you, Naez's appointment and arrival in Turkey is seen as one of the final steps in Israeli-Turkish reconciliation, after the ties between the two countries were almost severed following the Mavi Marmara incident of 2010, when Israeli commandos boarded a Turkish vessel trying to break Israel's blockade of Gaza. The commandos were then attacked by the armed protesters on board, and in the clashes that ensued, nine Turkish citizens were killed and several Israeli troops were injured. And ties between Israel and a number of African nations are getting a boost. Seven foreign ministers and several other top officials from 13 Western African countries are in Israel this week to attend an agricultural conference entitled Enhancing Sustainable Agricultural Productivity in Arid and Semi-Arid Regions. The three-day conference, which began today, is organized by Israel's Agency for International Development Cooperation and the Economic Community of Western African States. Israel's foreign ministry said that relations were warming between Israel and West Africa and that the gathering, quote, constitutes fertile ground for the further development of relations both on political and economic levels. Foreign ministers in attendance included those of Nigeria, Togo, Liberia, Guinea, Cape Verde, Gambia, and Sierra Leone. U.S. President Barack Obama has extended an invitation to the children and grandchildren of the late Prime Minister, Foreign Minister, and President of Israel, Shimon Peres, to attend his final Hanukkah celebration in the White House. Paris' son, Chemi, and Mika Almog, Paris' granddaughter, will be among the candlelighters at the annual event next week. They will bring with them a menorah that has been passed down in the Paris family since the Holocaust. The White House Hanukkah event is taking place next week because of the proximity of Hanukkah to Christmas this year.
And taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS from Monday, December the 5th. At 7 o'clock, the wisdom of Dr. Ruth Westheimer. At 7.30, remarks from Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who talks about her judicial philosophy and a number of critical issues on the American scene from the Jewish Federations of North America's General Assembly in Washington. And then at 8, also from the GA, editor-in-chief of Haaretz, Aluf Ben, discusses the impact of the election of Donald Trump for Israel, U.S.-Israel relations, and for the American Jewish community. And at 9 o'clock, Mark Golub sits down with Israel National Radio's Yishai Fleischer on the Chaim, followed at 10 with a discussion from French intellectual Bernard-Henri Lévy, who talks about events in Europe and their effects on European Jewry and citizens around the world, with NYU professor Thane Rosenbaum at the 92nd Street Y. And coming up right after this newscast tonight at 6.30, Mark Golub speaks with Dr. Ruth Behar, who is professor of anthropology at the University of Michigan. Behar was born to Jewish parents in Havana, Cuba, and she shares her thoughts upon the death of Fidel Castro. And that's the JBS News Update for Monday, December the 5th, 2016. I'm Tisha Bader.